Howdy y'all. Welcome back to my channel. This is AR Cavley. Today we're going to do a review of the D100 streamlined game called Simple Quest. This is by D101 Games, who make Open Quest, and this is the streamlined, cut down version of that game. Recently they put out a third edition of their Open Quest game, but uh, I, I didn't back it, but I did decide to get one of these smaller copies just because I like that I like that size and D one hundred systems are probably one of my top three. So let's go ahead and take a look, see what's going on over there. Alright, now this this one is actually a leftover from the Kickstarter that I ordered directly and was at the mercy of the uh, British Post <laughs> as it shipped over to the U.S. But the ones that you can order to get the, the print-on-demand, they're I'm sure they look about the same. They may not be color inside, and they may not have this fancy ribbon, and they all... Books always get a plus one for a ribbon uh, from me. And as you can see on the inside, Newt Newport, he gave me a he gave me a smiley face. I don't know if uh, if the British have a announcer voice, but Newt Newport kind of sounds like a, like a TV anchor or something. This is Newt Newport from D101 Games, today covering all the latest news that you need to know in the RPG industry. But the book itself is uh, pretty well made, pretty sturdy. It has, at least on the back, uh, it has info on the on the back, which is actually part of a uh, scenario that comes with the game itself. The artwork inside is pretty good. Uh, it has color artwork. One or two of the pieces seem a little anachronistic. Maybe, uh, but having having put some books together myself, you know, sometimes you don't have <laughs> you don't have complete control over what kind of art you use. Now it's very, like I said, it's very streamlined. It's D one hundred, and if you know, if you're familiar with D one hundred or the basic role playing slash Rune Quest slash Mithras. Most of this will be very familiar. You have your typical attributes, strength, constitution, size, dexterity, intelligence, power, charisma. And you have a bonus for extra damage if you're big enough and strong enough. And it's a simple D100 system, which I like because they're uh, very intuitive. Each It has a cut down selection of skills like a lot of mo uh, modern streamlined games do where they put e each skill covers a broader range of abilities than you know something like say traveler you know early editions of traveler um, earlier editions of well even of, of rune quest where you had more skills more specific skills in my opinion, that works. That works better in more primitive settings, just because primitive people tended to have a wider skill set. We're much more specialized today, and they're basic. You know, they start with an attribute. It tells you what the base is. That's what you start with that skill, and then, and so it's you know it's three die six to roll your stats. Um, and then you have a certain number of points to spend on the skills. And that's where it talks about right here. This uses the skills for resistance. So you, if you're trying to make like a saving throw, it's actually a skill. And you spend, each one has a base, and you spend... 50 points between the three 
skills as they're broken up. So everyone starts with those. Magic in this game, the, the game itself does not come with a default setting per se, or at least no specifics about that setting, except that this adopts one of the early RuneQuest ideas that everybody knows a little bit of magic. I don't, I'm not really, that's not really my preferred, so you, it's easy enough to cut out. Um, I prefer magic always to be kind of rare and usually dangerous, personally. But that is definitely in, you know, in, in the cake, baked in the cake of early RuneQuest. Everyone could use little spells. And when you start... You do, everyone starts with, I think, three spells, and you don't get to buy those right up front. Everyone has a skill for casting all their spells. Not Each spell does not have a sp its own skill. You have a magic skill, and that starts with power three. According to this, you, you can't add to it. You just start with that, probably to put a, to put a, a leash on magic skills to start with. So it has the basic uh, starting packages, which are handy. Um, there's no classes, but you can choose a character focus, warrior, expert, which is like the nice way to say thief <laughs> or magician. And that affects how you would use, how you create the characters. And they're optional. You don't have to use those. They are optional. Uh, it uses a uh, growth, uh, what do I call them? Not growth points, but um, <clears throat> it doesn't use direct XPs. Uh, you get growth points for accomplishing goals, basically. It can be specific goals, the GM can award them. And I, I kind of prefer that than just straight on numbers for XPs. Um, to get, because it gives the GM a little more f flow control, if you will, about maybe how fast characters gain. And since this doesn't have levels, it's, you know, it doesn't quite equate. Whereas in like OSR, D20 type games, at least, you know, some of the older ones, how many experience points you needed to get to the next level was often a consideration, right? You might, you might pick a class that, requires fewer to gain levels but this has no levels a little chart about how many uh, per growth point or, or yeah growth point and each this is how much it costs to raise it by five percent that skill and that's based on the ex current skill so of course that you know the more skilled you are the harder it is to to skill up All right, basic equipment, 2d8, 1d8. And this uses a general armor class, or not an armor class, but uh, damage resistance. And so ring mail, you stop three points it, when you get hit. And that works... I think that works pretty well to have the general, because a lot of people I know don't like recording information on a body part by body part basis, although that was one of the things I always <laughs> liked about, uh, see, I guess it was RuneQuest 2nd Edition uh, that I got back in the 80s. I always liked being able to, to, to picture those specific wounds where you get hit. But because the... Because the damage dice are relatively low, you know, you're rolling 1d8, 1d6, even a low amount of armor points has a chance of helping you out. And if you get hit with a critical hit, it, you, do, you take max damage and ignore armor. So that's not, that's not good to get hit that way. Standard equipment. 
All right now the basic rules you you have a skill and you need to roll under it it can be modified whether if it's hard or easy here this is a, the skill modifier if it's easy enough that you're going to get over 100 and this game this game stops at 100 it, you you can't have a skill higher than 100 but if it's going to be so easy that you're automatically going to make it, then one of those situations you don't really need. Let's talk about opposed skill tests. Um, and assist. Basic stuff. Here's uh, disease, diseases and poisons. Uh, they're basically treated as opponents that you roll against, you make opposed rolls with. Combat is un, uh, or should be familiar to everyone who's that, but you have one action that you can take. It doesn't use the some of the D100 systems where you might get multiple actions as far as its action economy. You get one, you get one action, but you can defend. So they roll their skill to hit you. And then you roll your skill to either dodge or parry. If you have shields, it's easier to parry with. You have bonuses for just for having shields because, well, they're pretty useful. It's easier to defend, and you can defend against multiple people easier. If you roll doubles on a skill, it's a critical success or critical failure. And whenever two people roll, whereas a an attack and then a defense roll is not, net, is not really an opposed roll. It's two separate skill rolls, but uh, you do compare the results and if you succeed and they succeed the defender succeeds the defender blocks your shot if you succeed with a critical success then you get a critical success unless they also get a critical success the combat system has a, a fair amount of options that you can uh, that you can take that can make some interesting tactical choices with now here's a point where it says the difference between parry and dodge. In some games, if you... Uh, in BRP games especially, D100 games, it takes into the account the weight of the weapon versus the weight of the defense. And so there are some... You know, if you have a dagger and someone's swinging a halberd at you, even if you parry, it's going to blow through your parry and hit. And so you'd want to dodge. Uh, in a streamlined version... You don't really have that, and so there really isn't too much. Some versions, they'll have a dodge, means that you jump away or you end up prone because you're actually like leaping out of the way of something. Uh, but in this case, it's you basically would just always use your best skill, except in cases, uh, you know, dodge would also be used for like leaping out of the way of boulders and stuff. The system itself uses hit points, and there are no there are no hit point hit point or are there are no um, increases in hit points. So as you go along, if you start with eleven hit points, because your hit points are you start off fairly low. Uh, if you start off with eleven, you're going to stay with eleven. So even as you get skilled, it's still pr pretty dangerous to fight, especially if, because anyone can hit you with a critical. And that can mess you up pretty bad. This particular version has a... When you're at zero hit points, you're dead. There are a couple of things that it says you can... You know, you can use a, like a fortune point or something to survive and then come back with one hit point. 
the Open Quest 2 and other versions like Legends and uh, I think had what was called a, a major wound level. If you got hit with enough points, you rolled on a chart and took a specific injury, you know, like your wrist got broken or your eye got poked out or <clears throat> something like that. Open Quest 2, which is the one I have on PDF, I think Open Quest 2 um, refurbished or revamped or so something like that, it had that major wound level. And in fact, the first place I encountered it was in Renaissance Deluxe, which is the first place I actually heard about Open Quest at all. And it had that major wound level. And I thought that was a, it was a pretty good way to add some distinct hits to a system that just uses hit points. You know, this, this system does not have it. I think it suffers a little bit for it. Because I think that adds a, a level of interest, interesting results to a combat. And it looks like it might have been involved at one point, or maybe it got uh, cut and paste, because <clears throat> here it talks about stabilizing mortal wounds, but in this game system, when you're down to zero, you're dead, unless you use the fortune point, and then you're not at zero hit points. You're at one hit point. So I think maybe it was maybe included, but... That's not how it works now. You hit zero hit points and you're dead. Which, you know, for a streamlined game, is not necessarily a, a bad game design choice. All right, magic is divided up in it's kind of an interesting way. It's divided up into the type of spells that everyone would know. Ones that are that are rare, and then ones that are kind of like for the secret masters. There are no power points or really any limitations to casting the spells, as you know, as far as how many spells you can cast a day or running out of power. Um, I'm not quite sure how I how I feel about that. It does make it you know maybe more simple to run, and then. Generally speaking, people's casting is down, but or is at a lower skill level. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It seems like it would be maybe kind of easy to once you once you get to a certain skill level, really dominate if you had the right skill that you could just cast over and over. All right, and it's a long. It's a list of fairly, you know, familiar type skills or, or spells. If you've played other games, you know, seekers, look for protection type things, increase weapon damage. It has a pretty good uh, list of, of critters. And one thing that that I like is that the the stat blocks are are slimmed down. They don't. In most of your D100 type games, they have all the creatures' average stats and what you'd roll for them. Um, I know I never really use those. I just use always the average. Here just bas basically gives you the information you need to interact with them for most, uh, most combats. Uh, and especially since the resistances are what you would typically make attribute rolls for, they're built in here, so you don't have to even really worry about it. It gives you skills already. And it has a good a good mix of critters. Bigger critters are tough. And even since the 80s, I have hated ducks. I've just always hated ducks. I, and maybe at one point it was just my uh, uh, my my teen angst, my 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 teen inability to appreciate new, <laughs> new and gonzo things, but no, I hate ducks. I mean, you, you can't, you can't really, 
mark against having ducks in it because you know that goes back to the beginning i like the brew they were cool but ducks they irritate me i didn't even like howard the duck and then here are the the stats for the different races like this this is one of those pictures it's a cool picture but it's a little out of place it looks like a you know a dwarf ninja But the artwork's pretty pretty good throughout the uh, the beast tree. That's one that seems <laughs> I was talking about. It seemed a little anachronistic. Uh, I'm not sure if they I'm sure if they had tail coats and top hats back then. But you know, satyrs are their own people. But most of the art matches pretty well with what's being depicted, so that's always good. And then here's the here's a, a the the critters, you know. The, these are like strange monsters and stuff. And here's just the stat blocks for the critters for things that everyone would know already. And here's the other part of the setting that, like I said, while not specific or, or not a lot of detail necessarily about you know who worships who or or whatnot um it does have a list of gods and goddesses and religious magic is its own but it still uses the same rules but your god or goddess kind of determines the skills and the magic that are appropriate that you would that you would use and they're you know the Typical, also, Hunter, God of War, Night Mistress, and, you know, all the usual um, common avatars of our history. There's a leprechaun god right there. So, <laughs> um, here's a couple of little bits to add some history to your character. And then an index. You see that the sheets are pretty streamlined, gives you a good idea. And then there is a adventure in the back. It's it works well enough. You know, it, it's it's an introductory adventure for a you know streamlined game. So All right, so that's my review of Simple Quest. I like it pretty well. Um, some of the options, some of the combat options had been reduced. And I think I think they didn't really need to be taken out of there. The, 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 the note in the book talked about how they required a, a better understanding of the game, which is not, doesn't have the full rules. So they... Um, Newt decided not to include him. Um, I think they probably, for myself, I think I would have liked to have a, a couple of more options because you can be streamlined without uh, killing everything. Uh, but I think I think overall it was a pretty good, pretty good cutting down because you know there's always the question of what do you cut down, what do you keep if you're trying to streamline something. Uh, so. I think it's pretty well done, and the the benefit of having that is that it's very easy to add modules to a D100 game. You know, I could go and I could pull the the major wound levels from this or from Open Quest Two, whatever, and just use them and make that determination. Just incorporate them into the game, and because they're so uh, consistent, they're so or interchangeable, it's easy enough to do. So if you wanted to add back some actions, if you want even to change with the, you know, mess around with the action economy or add weapon size, it's very easy to put those things in. Of course, the simple quest, you know, it's not really designed to those. It's designed to have a, a, a quick and easy just roll and fight kind of back uh, system. And I think it does pretty well. I like it. Simple quest by D101 Games. I'll 
put the links and everything down in the description and uh, hope the review was helpful. Happy gaming.